welcome back to combat mission where I am about to unleash the fury of my Soviet comrades on the American defenders commanded by Magellan Jones. After my successful defense against his breakout attempt in my last video we decided to have a rematch in which I would be the attacker. So this time I will have to work my way through two kilometers of Magellan's defenses in order to capture the major victory location on this map a little village that I have named Schadenfreude. There is nothing remarkable about this village if you discount the many magically floating rooftops, but the only paved road on the map runs through it and it has a bridge over the local canal. So breaking through here and capturing it would allow Soviet follow-on forces to quickly continue the advance into Germany. So let's take a look at my plan for the coming battle. It's a cold and misty day in April and the fog has reduced visibility to one kilometer or less. The ground is wet, making mud a real problem that I will have to contend with. Looking from my starting location towards the end goal, there's a couple of terrain features that I will come across. The most dominating one being this mount. It's right in the middle of the map, well within Magellan's territory and it offers good sightlines all around. Though because of the fog, this is not as much as a problem as it would otherwise be. This hill is the first minor objective that I will come across on my way to the village of Schadenfreude. The second minor objective is this farm on a hillside. From this farm you can absolutely dominate the left side of the map, but it offers very little cover and concealment other than from the few buildings that are there. Another noteworthy terrain feature is this mine. It's situated between the mount and the farm and it's in a hollow in which Magellan could be hiding an entire battalion that I wouldn't know about until it came crashing into my flank. So how am I going to break through two kilometers of defensive lines and still have enough fighting power left at the end for some urban combat at the village? Generally the answer is of course a concentration of force. Rather than advancing in a wide line and taking on every American GI I encounter, maximizing my exposure to enemy fire, I will aim to suppress the defenders along one single axis of approach with artillery fire and then quickly and decisively push through Magellan's defenses in that area. The way that I see it, the right side of the map is the only part suitable for this type of assault. The wide open grass fields offer plenty of room to maneuver a battalion through and mud will not be a factor. Now of course, concentrating my forces along one single axis of approach comes with quite a risk. If I signal my intentions too early and Magellan Jones sees through my plan, then he will be able to shift all of his defensive forces to the area where I'm trying to break through, reducing my numerical advantage and with that my chances of success. To prevent this, two platoons of 1st Company are tasked with performing a feint attack on the left flank. While these units are in fact only a token force, supported by artillery fire, they are meant to give Magellan the impression that I am actually attacking across a wide front, so that he cannot afford to move his units from the left side of the map to the right. They will only have to fool Magellan for about 15 minutes, because that's when the main assault starts. Though I would rather take a bit longer to do proper recon and such, 15 minutes is the longest that you can postpone pre-planned artillery fires in combat mission. And since I will be suppressing any suspected enemy position along my route of advance with artillery in true Soviet style, 15 minutes to start it is. Of my two infantry companies, first company will be the one doing all the leg work in the first 15 minutes before the assault starts. Half the company is currently waiting for the artillery fire to finish so they can go forward and clear the forest ahead of them of the enemy positions that I suspect will be there. But when the artillery fire stops and they go forward, they find that the forest is completely deserted. There is no defenders, no scouts, no observation post. At the same time, the other half of first company is performing the feint attack on the left side of the map and they are pretty much finding the same thing. Which is nothing. Rather than finding defenders, anti-tank positions, minefields, there's just an eerie quietness. The only firing is done by my own artillery. Within the first 15 minutes, my scouts managed to get halfway up the map without encountering anyone. Except for one sound contact in this forest on the right. While the clock is ticking down to the start of the assault, a BMP that I had put in an overwatch position is suddenly hit by an anti-tank rocket. 
judging by the direction where the rocket came from, there must be enemy anti-tank infantry somewhere in this area. This is a real problem, because from that position they can probably shoot my vehicles in the flank when the assault starts. I quickly divert half the forces of the feint attack to sweep the area. It's not like they were fooling anyone with their feint attack anyways, since there were no defenders on this half of the map, other than the one AT team they're now after. I position two grenade launchers in a position from where they can give fire support to the sweeping platoon, while they comb through the forest inch by inch. But my platoon is not finding anything, and the clock is ticking. A BMP that is following the platoon to support them is almost hit by another ATGM, coming from a slightly different location and it's clear that the enemy AT team is moving up ahead of my platoon that's looking for them. As the assault is about to begin, I have no choice but to move my tanks into their starting locations, because once the artillery starts firing, the tanks only have a limited window of opportunity during which the defenses of the enemy will be suppressed. But this means exposing my tanks to the runaway anti-tank team. And although my automatic grenade launchers are frantically trying to suppress anything in the tree line, the enemy AT team manages to take out the main gun of one of my T-62s. Earning it the nickname Petrokov the Toothless. But the enemy AT team has outmaneuvered itself. They've taken up position in an area that's about to be completely flattened by the opening artillery barrage, kicking off the assault. Within just two minutes, the battalion traverses half the map and arrives at the forest where the one sound contact was spotted. Infantry quickly disembarks to clear the forest while the BMPs fire at every suspected enemy position. When the infantry enters the forest, it doesn't take them long to find the source of the sound contact. It's an American tow vehicle that's already been taken out by the artillery. The advance so far is going swimmingly, but as the battalion is getting ready to move on, an M60 tank is spotted in the distance. My T-62s immediately return fire. But their missed shots kick up so much dust and smoke that they lose line of sight on the enemy. The M60 tank, however, is not bothered by the dust in the least. Two burning T-62s later, the dust finally clears and my units are able to make the spot. Now while this was all going on, the half of first company that was performing the feint attack has gone up the mount to try and take this important strategic position. Initially, the mount looks undefended, but coming over the top, it becomes clear that there is in fact enemy infantry here. It's just half a squad, but they are supported by at least one APC down by the farm on the other side. And neither side is able to dislodge the other one. The whole thing quickly escalates into a grenade tossing contest. But since I've taken enough of the mount to provide fire support from there to the main assault, this stalemate is fine by me. So it's good news all around so far. The mount is effectively under my control, the one enemy tank that was blocking my path has been taken out, and my artillery on the next set of tree lines to cover the next stage of my advance is coming down right on time. But then, bad news. There's another M60 tank right next to the one that was already taken out. But this time, my tanks are not able to spot it.
and it immediately starts raking in kills. Since the M60 tank is killing my units as fast as he can reload, I quickly order my battalion to take cover behind this slope. They are out of sight of the M60 tank behind the slope, but my attack has completely stalled. I have to come up with a plan to get moving again, or that what I feared would happen if I would be too slow probably will. Luckily I don't just have a plan, I have four plans. For plan A I'm bringing up Corporal Ratnikov, who leads a two-man medium-range anti-tank team. Ratnikov is ordered to set up in the right flank forest and take out the enemy M60 tank as fast as he can. Though what I forgot is that Ratnikov has officially been declared the least qualified anti-tank infantryman in the entire Warsaw Pact. This on the basis that he is quite unable to distinguish tanks from any other terrain feature. Making him pack up and move his stuff closer to the edge of the forest doesn't help. He just refuses to recognize the tank even if it's shooting at his own comrades. This means that plan A officially goes out the window. So on to plan B, which involves using the height advantage that the mount gives me. Comrade Slobin has been ordered to see if it's possible to find a position on top of the mount from where he can see the M60 tank, and much to my relief he immediately spots it and starts firing at it. This relief however is short lived as Magellan apparently has the top of the mount well covered from his side. A second BMP tries to get line of sight on the enemy tank from a less exposed position. But clearly, plan B is a no-go. Plan C is a lot more risky, but if it wasn't, it would have been plan A or B. For this plan I want to dismount a platoon of infantry and move them up through this tree line to close the distance with the tank and then take it out with short range anti-tank weapons. While this is a dangerous proposition in and of itself, the morale of the man is not exactly boosted when it turns out that there is another tank that I haven't spotted yet. So the tank that is blocking my battalion's advance is in a hold down position over here, while a mystery tank hiding in a forest somewhere over here is keeping my platoon from reaching it. Its machine gun fire is enough to make my infantry pull back. Then Magellan decides to demonstrate why it's important not to bunch up your troops, and also why it's important for the Soviets to keep moving on the advance because of the short artillery call-in times of the Americans. This situation with this one enemy tank blocking my entire battalion's assault is getting uglier by the minute. But the fact that the mystery tank is soon thereafter disposed of by my T-62s does open the way for plan D. Once set in motion, plan D will unfold fast, so I will give a rundown in advance. The starting signal will be an artillery barrage on the blocking tank, to make it button up and to rattle the crew. Then Petrokov the Toothless, who doesn't have a main gun anymore, but who does deserve a chance to earn medals as much as the next man, will race past the M60 to distract it and will take cover up ahead. Then two T62s will jump the rattled and distracted M60 and take it out from close range. To get the battalion moving again as fast as I can, within that very same turn a BMP with scouts will race to the bend in the road up ahead to make sure it's clear for the battalion to pass in the next turn. The artillery barrage comes in as planned, and the crew of the M60 tank is forced to button up. What happens next all happens in the space of one turn. Toothless goes forward, closely followed by the two tank hit team behind him. But Toothless clearly is hit worse than I thought and he's struggling to make speed. 
To make the impending disaster worse, the dust and smoke from the artillery barrage is now obscuring the enemy tank from view. The Tech AI of the second T-62 doesn't know what to do with the obstacle on the road and awkwardly tries to go around it. As my forces still can't see the enemy M60, it's a coin toss who's going to get hit next. Somewhat luckily for me, the tank without a functioning main cannon is the one that is taken out. Petrokov himself survives, but his driver is now a post-mortem hero of the Soviet Union. Speaking of post-mortem heroes, here comes a BMP full of scouts that was supposed to scout ahead, but the driver slams on the brakes as soon as he's hit by MG fire from the tank. And just when things look most dire, an unlikely hero emerges and Plan A springs back into action. Ratnikov has had his first bright moment of the day and with that has cleared the way for my battalion. The way finally free, I sent my battalion forward again. The bend in the road is the next likely place for an ambush, so I dismount infantry to check both the left and right side. At first everything seems to be clear, but when I dismount my infantry on the right side of the road to check the forest there, Magellan Jones springs his next trap. The BMP was taken out by infantry on the left side of the road, so I quickly order my tanks to turn their focus and their fronts to the left as well to prevent being overrun by infantry with short range anti-tank weapons. But I'm not aware that Magellan has an M60 tank hidden deeper in the forest on the right side of the road. To try and resolve the situation, I've called for Corporal Ratnikov. Ratnikov arrives and quickly moves to set up a firing position. He briefly spots the tank before he loses sight of it, but another target presents itself. As Ratnikov's inability to distinguish enemy vehicles from terrain features keeps bugging him, the enemy Falcon AAA gun ends what was starting to look like a mildly promising career. The sound contact on the M60 tank slowly moves away, which tells me that Magellan is done with this phase of his defense. So I'm gonna have to decide what I'm going to do. I've lost all my tanks but one and my infantry strength has been greatly reduced as I've lost BMPs with entire squads of infantry in sight. Plus, there's the attrition due to the artillery. I've also lost an entire platoon's worth of BMPs that got stuck in the mud. Remember how I brought up Ratnikov and other soldiers with a truck? That's because their BMPs got stranded in the mud and they had to be picked up. Now, what do I have to show for these losses? I've killed three of Magellan's tanks, and I have not even touched them as infantry yet. So I expect to find a rather large contingent of infantry in the village. AT weapons and all. And I expect Magellan to have at least two more tanks. My conclusion is that I don't believe that I have the punching power to make it to the village and take it. So I'm gonna have to come up with a plan to prevent the political commissar from sending me to face the People's Tribunal. The plan is to take both minor objectives and hold them until the timer runs out. The first step towards this goal is capturing the mine that's in between the two objectives. I then proceed to place 5 BMPs on top of the mount as a base of fire. From there they can control the farm and the Americans are not able to get in or out of the objective.
The Americans will have to shoot my BMPs off the mount if they want to have any chance of holding the farm. Although they try and do some damage, there's just no staring down 5 BMPs with 2 M60s. My plan for the remainder of this battle is fairly straightforward. Destroy the farm buildings with artillery, shoot anything that moves from the top of the mount, then move in with infantry and hold the objective until the timer runs out. Then suddenly to my surprise I see a BMP dashing forward. Apparently I've given it a fast move command where I did not intend to. That's about like taking grandma for a Sunday drive. As comical as that was to watch, I did just lose a full squad and I was already strapped for infantry. In the distance, my troops spot two M60 tanks, meaning that I now count six enemy tanks. Magellan has brought more than one platoon, but how much more remains to be seen. He can't have spent too many points on tanks, as he has also brought several gunships which can't be cheap, but which were brushed aside by my anti-air units with ease. After a very long call-in time, my fire mission on the farm finally comes in. The plan was for my infantry to go forward as soon as the artillery is done, but with the two M60 tanks covering the farm from a distance that would likely turn into a bloodbath, so I will have to take those out first. To this end, I've lined up my last remaining T62 and most of my BMPs behind the ridgeline. The idea is to pop up as soon as the artillery finishes and the smoke clears. Of course, the M60 tanks have the better optics and will probably be the first to spot my vehicles. But with so many eyes looking their way, I expect that I'll be able to take them out. Just when it's time to commence with the pop-up attack, disaster strikes, as the question whether Magellan has a second platoon of tanks or not is answered. The BMPs on top of the mount will not be able to provide support, as their line of sight is blocked by a small hill between them and their comrades. This has been a complete disaster, and the only thing stopping Megalan's M60s from going on a rampage through my lines are my BMPs on top of the mount with their ATGMs. My anti-tank infantry then proceeds into a deadly cat and mouse game on and around the hill with the enemy M60s. After killing two of the enemy tanks, Magellan decides to retreat his other two. Magellan's counterattack and my reaction to it pretty much concluded our battle. The tanks that were covering the farm from a distance were eventually driven off with artillery fire, after which my infantry was able to take the farm. After that point, Magellan and I agreed to cease fire, 
So April 7, 1980 would for the people of Schadenfreude forever be the day that World War III almost came to their doorstep. The end result of the battle was a draw, which surprised both Magellan and me, as we had both expected the other to win a minor victory. So my plan for this battle was to adopt the Soviet doctrine as much as I saw room for it given the circumstances. But that all went south after first contact. I had expected Magellan to set up a deep layered defense that I could then attack a small subsection of and bypass the rest of his defenses that way. But instead of a deep elastic defense, I found a brick wall almost at the other end of the map that I ran into and broke my nose on. Reviewing the map after the battle was over, I found that Magellan had only brought one platoon of infantry and had opted for a strong tank force. So with my two infantry companies, I had basically brought a knife to a gunfight. So if I had to name one lesson that I take home from this battle, then it would be that in Cold War, you're more likely to bring too little armor than too much. In closing, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. If you did, then you could also watch the video of the first battle between Magellan and myself. I'll make sure to put a link in the description down below. We have already started on a rematch and I've got several ideas for future videos, so make sure to check back sometime in the future. Until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>